Today in Vic's Tips is the classic corned beef and cabbage that we love to serve and eat for good fortune on St. Patrick's Day. Tender corned beef, delicious earthy cabbage with carrots and potatoes, soft and sweet and cooked to perfection. But which method of cooking is better? The slow cooker or the stove top? And what's the difference between the different cuts of brisket? Which one should you buy? I'll answer all your questions plus lots of tips for a guaranteed foolproof St. Patrick's Day meal. Hey, it's Vicki. While corned beef and cabbage may not be on the menu for St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, because they usually make bacon with their cabbage, it's the meal of choice and born really by necessity for Americans. And I love the effortless, delicious, melt in your mouth, tender corned beef. Unless you're smoking the brisket, which my husband Eddie sure wants to do, so let me know in the comments if you want him to do that for you. You'll need to start first by selecting the right brisket. There's two kinds you'll see in the grocery store, a point or a flat cut. Both are a tough cut of meat from the breast area of the cow. The point cut is the thick end of the brisket. It's quite tasty because it has more fat and marbling, although it'll fall apart when you are cooking it. Kind of like um, pulled pork kind of situation. So it doesn't give you a nice clean slice like the flat cut does. It's a little bit leaner and more consistent thickness. It just depends on what you're looking for. I'm using the flat cut because I have plans for my corned beef brisket. I want that sandwich tomorrow and corned beef hash with a nice egg on the top in the morning. <gasps> oh yeah, okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I think I like the leftovers more than the meal. Just saying. They're both gonna shrink down a lot, like half. So I know I need to make two and hide some because I really, really want that sandwich and the corned beef hash. Like, really. Either way, look for a deep red color. Nothing gray, ew, and a nice layer of fat. Fats. Flavor. I'm gonna be using both the slow cooker and the stovetop method because I wanna know which one is best. Both have the same recipe. I'm gonna start with the slow cooker because I know that's gonna take the longest. First, you cut up a small onion into quarters. You wanna leave it in big chunks and put that on the bottom of the pot. Then rinse that sticky brine off of the brisket because it's real salty. And don't worry, you're not gonna lose any flavor. It is so infused with seasonings, you're good. <laughs> Place the brisket on top of the onions, fat side up, so all that fat will melt into the meat. Yum. Then two cups of water and one bottle of Guinness. Use any beer that you like. I've even used Corona. I always have that laying around, but not for very long. But a good Irish stout dramatically increases the flavor. Sprinkle the seasoning packet on top, cover, and set your slow cooker on low for 10 hours. Then it's cook for four hours, add potatoes and carrots, cook for another four hours, and your cabbage, two hours, and done. <laughs> To make it a little more effortless and a more set it and forget it type of situation, I like to cut up my veggies and have them ready in the fridge. So when the time comes, I just kind of dump it in pot, go about my day. <laughs> Peel four or so carrots. I like to slice them diagonally or on the bias for presentation. Slice them any way you like. Just make sure that you've got real big pieces. They'll be sitting there for a while. I'm using baby red potatoes so I don't have to cut them. But if you're using the bigger ones, you want to cut them again into bigger chunks so they don't fall apart. Then cut up the cabbage into big chunks. Put a damp towel under your cutting board so it doesn't move around on you. Safety first. Then slice off the top core of the cabbage so you have a sturdy flat surface to work with. Cut the cabbage in half, then in half again. That's the core. It's what we're trying to remove here. Cut it on an angle to get that hard piece off. And as always, place your discards. That, by the way, you could save because it makes a real flavorful broth for soups. So good. You put them in a bowl or a plastic bag that's right next to your cutting board to make cleanup a breeze. Easy peasy. Now chop it into chunks and rinse it well. And hey, you know that plastic bag that you brought the cabbage home in from the grocery store? It doubles as your chopped cabbage container. And a handy way to close it for easy opening is you just kind of twist it, fold it over two fingers, grab from underneath and make a loop. And ta-da, easy to carry, easy to open. And for the stove top, same thing. I just started it a little later because it's gonna take like half the time. <laughs> just be sure not to use an aluminum pan because that's gonna react with the cabbage and it'll give you like a funky, metallic-y flavor. And you don't want that. You need a good heavy bottom pan like stainless steel, cast iron, something like that. Bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and this one you're gonna cook for two hours, add your potatoes and carrots, two hours for your cabbage, two hours and done. <laughs> so remember, four, four, two, 
two, two, two. It works out, trust me. And now this is a great time to make it Irish soda bread. It's a Guinness brown Irish soda bread. So good, gotta try it. You'll know everything's done when your corned beef is just about to fall apart when you stick a fork in it and your potatoes and carrots are nice and tender. And if it's not ready, cook it a little longer. It's okay, not gonna kill it. Now let's see which one is better. Just like every other cut of meat, you gotta let it rest on the counter for about 15 minutes and cut across the grain. Gorgeous. The stove cooked corned beef is cutting pretty good, a little bit crumbly on the end. I love it. It still stays together better than a point cut, which is good, it's just a little more messy. Still super tasty. My slow cooker meat, let's see how that cut. Oh, nice. Kind of cuts about the same. Actually, it's giving me a, an even better slice. I'm gonna try to go real thin for sandwiches. I wait for St. Patrick's Day to make this. It's so good. That stout beer in there really elevates that flavor. Just a little depth of something something helps it all out. So from the panel of unbiased experts, which include me, <laughs> the both of them are the same juiciness. Of course they have the same flavor. And I tell you, you know what, go that extra mile and put that beer in. Totally worth it. But they're the same tenderness, the only real difference, and it's just so slight, is I can get a thinner slice out of the slow cooker one for my sandwiches tomorrow. So, whichever way you go, it's gonna be delicious. If you like my video, go ahead and give me a comment. Love to hear from you, and I love making these videos. I sure hope you like them too. And I make more like these every week. I'll see you next time. So yeah, let me shove all this stuff in my face. So good. Mm -mm -mm. Aaron, go, bruh.